Hey, this is Joe here, and I'm here with another rant today. If rants are still even relevant. Do people still do ranting more? I don't know. Anyway, I'm here to talk about a little fandom some of you might have already heard of. Obviously, since it, the title of the fandom is in the description of the video. And it's in the title of the video. It's the creepypasta fandom. I'm not going to beat around the bush any longer. So basically, for those that aren't familiar, creepypastas are basically just the internet equivalent of campfire stories, if you will. Like, they're supposed to be, like, really scary, like, keep you awake at night and keep... They're supposed to keep you awake at night and be try to scare you at your wits. Basically, that's how they're supposed to go. Um, I don't know which one it was that got me into creepypasta in the first place, but... It was either Squidward's Suicide or the lost episode of Ed and Nettie. But either way, through those, either one of those two, that's when I started getting into Creepypasta. Like, back in, back around 2011, 2012, I believe. I did like a lot of Creepypastas. Some even managed to scare me back then. Others I was just like, eh, that was good read, didn't really scare me. And others I thought they were just plain dumb at first sight. And one of my own creepypastas was actually inspired by Sonic.exe. You can already see the first error right there. And my other one, who's named Gia, she she basically had her creepypasta titled after I learned it by watching you. Yeah, you know that dumb 80s commercial to prevent drug use? You, alright? I learned it by watching you! And basically, here's what I think of Creepypasta itself as stories. There are some really good pastas out there, like Russian Sleep Experiment and Barbie Doll Ben Drowned are some of my favorites. And some are pretty shitty, like Clockwork, Jeff the Killer. Yeah, I said those two are bad, come fight me. And there are a lot of cliches that basically became staples of the fandom, like hyperrealism, unnecessary amounts of blood and gore, you name it. And basically to me the good ones are basically the diamonds in the rough in terms of the storytelling. Now before I go into all the negative stuff, I just want to say this real quick. I'm not saying all fans are bad. Obviously, I don't think I need to explain that to you, but there's some out there that'll take it the wrong way and be like, oh no, not all of us are bad. And also, if it weren't for Creepypasta, I wouldn't have met some of the people I already do now. Like, I already know a few artists like own, like um, Kyle, Ethan, Emma, even though she's not doing Creepypasta anymore, Kiki, just to name a few. Let's get on with this, shall we? Okay, what can I say about this fandom? This has to be one of the most ornery fandoms I've ever witnessed, and... Seeing how there's the Sonic and Homestuck and fucking Weeboo fandoms out there, that's saying a lot. So, there's basically three groups of people in this fandom. You have the average Joe, who likes to indulge in the creep, creepy and spooky ever so often, who probably has a story of their own, but for the most part just likes the stories themselves, and doesn't really part partake in anything, so to speak. Then there's group B, who try way too hard to be cool and edgy with adding t gratuitous amounts of blood and gore with every creepy pass they own. And who more often than not have their own OC that's labeled a Mary Sue or is even act an actual Mary Sue. Then you have the Stephen King wannabes that try to dictate everything, and try to dictate everything that makes a good story, and try to convince themselves that their own shit doesn't stink. They're basically the more pretentious ones of the group, and they're the least tolerable, tolerable toward original characters. Groups B and C kind of go in hand, while Group A represents the more sane parts of the fandom, although that's kind of few and far between, if you could say that. So I came up with a little list of the problems that I have with the fandom, so here's number one. Number one. It's basically like a popularity contest. Now, what I mean by that is everyone wants their own creation to be... Everyone expects their own creation to be internet famous, like become the next Slender Man or Jeff the Killer. Then again, why anybody would want their story to have the same fame as Jeff the Killer is beyond me, considering how that story is complete and utter shit. And it feels like creep most a lot of creepy bosses nowadays just are seamlessly rushed to put out there just just for the sake of fame. They don't really put much time and effort into it, which 
some of these pastas could have been good if given a lot more care and thought through a little bit more if, so they wouldn't be as filled with plot holes and whatnot. What kind of makes this a bit worse is that there are actually some good creepypastas out there that don't get the same amount of recognition because some more, some other pastas keep overtaking them. Like Nina the Killer, you know, that crabby Jeff the Killer ripoff that somehow has a lot of fans. Someone please explain that. Number two, the drama. There are two prominent examples which I'm trying to get at here. First one you probably already know about. It's Sally, Sally from the Creepypasta Play With Me. People are saying the creator Kiki, aka Shiloh, is promoting child porn and is labeling Sally a slut because she's drawn with multiple male characters like Jeff, Eilish, Jack, Ben, whoever the hell else. The topic of rape being used in Play With Me. I personally am a little bit split on this. I mean, yeah, I can see where all the hate is coming from. I can see why people would be upset about the rape issue. You see, it's... I don't know why, but people like to use rape in creepypastas, like, so lightheartedly, to where it's barely... to where it's barely even an issue. You're taking, like, a serious issue and just make it into a plot device. If you're... okay, if you're gonna use rape in your story, actually have it be, like, a big... a larger part in the story. Unless, not some kind of throwaway. And I can easily see why people would get mad about her being shipped with multiple characters. Like, it's like she can't decide which one she wants, wants to be with. But at the same time, she has stated that she's using an older Sally in, her draw in some of her drawings. And whether you believe that whole age thing when she draws them is completely up for debate. But, I'm rather neutral on the matter, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that at that. And then there's the whole issue with Laughing Jack. Yeah, remember when that shitstorm brewed? Hmm? Yeah, I'm just bringing that back from the grave casually, but yeah, but there's a point to be made here. Okay, for those that have been living under a rock for the past, I don't know, three, four years, the creator Laughing Jack has been known to sex sexually harass and abuse his female fans, or even other women, like Emma aka Comic Kid, for example. And yeah, he is a complete piece of shit for doing that. I'm not going to lie there. And to me, he's just, he knows, he knew what he was doing, so he thought he could use his popularity as a scapegoat to try to do whatever he, the hell he wants. But at the same time, the death threats being sent out about the time were just taking it a step too far. Yeah, I hate him and the other rape apologists, that were sticking up for him, but you don't send death threats to somebody. I don't care what they did or who it is. And during that time when I found out, I got so upset by it, I actually vowed to never come back to the creepypasta fandom, and I vowed to delete all my creepypasta stuff. Which, neither of that actually happened because A, I'm a lazy piece of shit, and two, I couldn't stay away from it long enough. I had some unfinished business to take care of at the time. And also, not exactly drama, but I felt like this needed to be addressed. Um, it involves the Slenderman stabbings. Yeah, you know, the 12-year-old girl that got stabbed by her two friends in the forest, like about 19, 20 times, I believe. She had to be sent to the hospital and all that shit. There was news reports all over the fucking place. And you know how how the Slenderverse, aka Creepypasta fandom, handled this? They were drawing the operator simmed symbols and being all like, oh, this is just fantasy, not reality. I honestly think that's the worst way you could handle this situation. I mean, a, someone almost died. It only comes to sh it only comes to show that these people cared care more about the state of their fandom than the life of a girl who just had a brush with death. I mean, I get it. I get that you want to show your support and everything, but that's definitely not the way you do it. Number three. Lack of respect. Okay, first off, you have the abuse and misuse of certain popular characters, like Tiki Toby, not crediting any art, art theft, not asking permission to use a character for whatever it is that they want to do, making them out of character, bashing ships and claiming a character to be theirs in a sense, like claiming that Jeff the Killer is your husband and whatnot. What? And be like, being all like, oh, they shouldn't be with each other. And overall not respecting the creator's wishes and what the, what they want the character to be. Just like with Tiki Toby and Clockwork. Basically, Castaway ended up getting 
getting booted out of the f getting driven away from the fandom because the fans were just like using his character in ways he didn't like it in ways he spe he specifically said that he didn't want to happen then what ended up happening was he just finally said, you know what, screw it, do whatever you want with him, I don't care. And Clockwork's creator, I can't remember her name right now, their, Tiktopia and Clockwork are canonically shipped. And the creator of that story said that she was going to remake it, but she ended up leaving the fandom before she got the chance to do so, which is actually kind of sad. Even though I think the original story isn't that good, it's not even halfway decent, to be perfectly honest. And here's the thing that you people don't seem to understand. As artists, we view our own characters as our muse, as our, our children. It, if I were put in a situation similar to that, if someone were trying to, trying to misuse Solana or Gia or whoever else, whoever character I owned, I'd be livid as hell. And I honestly don't blame Castaway in this sense. I honestly don't blame him for leaving. It, it wears on you after a while. And it's basically just filled with people with the mindset of, oh, it's the internet, so that means I can do whatever I want, even if it means going against someone else's wishes. Yeah, well, the internet doesn't always work that way. And there's also a lot of cases of online harassment and even cyberbullying. And I remember this one time specifically, where on DeviantArt, of course DeviantArt, where a group admin booted out another admin of sorts for not taking her side in an argument where she herself wanted to remain neutral and keep the peace. Since when was keeping the peace a bad thing? And it's an example of people abusing their pa power within the fandom. And also, everyone has some degree of victim complex with each other like they want to twist everyone's words around so they make them make themselves look like innocent angels they when in reality they just can't handle criticism number three what's considered canon okay here's my general stance when it comes to head cannons as long as it doesn't completely destroy the original canon it's all fair game i have virtually no problem with have cannons if that's truly the case. But I do understand that one person's vision may be another's completely detested idea. And but however, here's the thing about that. The lack of tolerance for new ideas is both frustrating and it's also kind of hypocritical considering how others have, you know, head cannons on their own. It's just like, well, what the fuck do you want? So it's okay for you to have head cannons, but not anyone else. And things that aren't explicitly stated as canon are treated as canon for some odd reason. I don't even know. First, they make... they First of all, they make Jeff and Jane the killer a couple. Which is not true because A. Jeff and Jane absolutely hate each other. And B. Jane has a girlfriend named Mary. So, how can they be together if that's the case? This is something that hasn't been officially stated in the original Jump the Killer story, but it's implied that Lou had died. That's the popular view. But it is still possible that Lou may or may not have escaped or possibly have lived longer. But if you share a differing opinion than everyone else, you are shunned, you are silenced, or just ignored entirely. So basically the entire idea of this is your ideas are bad, and you should feel bad. And the biggest issue of this fandom. Original characters and shipping. You all saw this coming. You all did. Don't lie to me, you little bastards. I know, I know. Every fandom is bound to suffer from shipping wars and flame wars and ship OC bashing and whatnot, what have you. But the creepypasta fandom des is definitely one of the worst offenders to this. So for starters, let's start off with the bias, the biases within the fandom when it comes to female OCs specifically. Female OCs are basically labeled as Mary Sue's, yet with, when a male OC comes along, no one bats an eyelash, hardly anyone cares. Especially, what makes this worse is that 9 out of 10, they don't even bother reading into their own stories. They only really bother to judge 
based on appearance alone. So basically, if she's a girl, then somehow she's inherently bad. Th that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this, in a way. If your OC isn't considered hot or sexy regardless of gender, but it mainly applies to females, then they'll be totally ignored even if they're well thought out and believable. Even if they're well developed on their own, they're still called Mary Sue's for being labeled for being with certain creepypastas. <coughs> Jeff. <coughs> And I feel like Jeff gets a lot of the brunt when it comes to creepypasta pairings. Like, he's paired with every single character. And you people call Sally a slut. God damn. And the Mary Sue stigma itself needs to be addressed and fixed up. The term Mary Sue gets thrown around so often that I think people have forgotten what it actually means. You see, a Mary Sue is somebody that is overpowered, is given no real challenge, and everybody likes them, they're, everybody likes them, they have no flaws whatsoever, everything pretty much goes their way. That is what a Mary Sue is. Not someone that just so happens to have a punk look. Hell, if you're gonna make that argument, Jeff is the biggest Mary Sue of all. I mean, think about it. And just like t with Tiki Toby and Clockwork, they try to break apart any canon shit because Oh, he, he or she is mine, or I don't like X character with Y, which is really fucking petty and selfish. Even going against their wishes and drawing them in sexual situations or with anyone that is they are paired with canonically. And let me just go on for a minute, like, the over-sexualization of creepypasta characters. Okay, don't forget what creepypasta is actually supposed to be about. Horror. Yeah, romance is fine in small doses, but... Remember what it creepypasta in general is supposed to be. And if that's all you're going to focus on is the ship alone, I think you might need to reprioritize your goals. And they say creepypasta characters shouldn't love anyone, yet they will ship crack pairings and even yaoi pairings like Jeff Ben, Jeff Slenderman, Jeff either one of the Jacks, Jeff Smile Dog, I don't know. They'll ship Jeff with pretty much anybody and no one will bat an eyelash, but the second a girl is paired with Jeff, they're like, oh my god, what a slut. And yeah, they'll, they won't, they don't like OC and Jeff, but they'll take Alice and Jeff. Yeah. Alice Liddell from Alice Manish Returns. Remember when that was a thing? And this fandom has some of the biggest shipping wars I've ever seen, especially among the Yaoi fangirls. I have seen a lot more Yaoi ships than I have seen actual Jeff and another female ship. I don't know if it's, if it's because there are more yaoi fangirls available. That would make sense. I'm not gonna lie. So after all that's been said, after all this rambling, all this me trying to speak clearly when I clearly can't at the moment, why do I bring this all up? Well, it's simple. This type of behavior in the fandom needs to stop. How do you expect to get anybody else involved in if all this shit keeps happening? If veterans and newcomers alike are being driven away because of people like this, the people I've shown you. The, it's self-important dickheads like these that keep ruining the fandom for everybody. Basically, them. It's the fault of these people that are ma that's making the fandom fall in on itself. And people aren't willing to speak up about it because either A... They're too scared to, or B, they're too arrogant to see what's in front of them. Nothing about this fandom is going to improve if we don't do something about it. If this fandom doesn't get its shit together, it's going to end up becoming a dark husk of what it once was. And I won't be around to see it happen like that.